in here. All right. We're back, everyone. We're going to be uh, doing our last part for today. So if you haven't seen our other parts to this study of this Torah portion study for the feast for the week of tap for the weekly feast of tabernacles, I would suggest you go all the way to part one when all these get uploaded. But we're about to uh, finish what little we have left of chapter 10. And then that will be it for the day. So here we go. Um, says, uh, Kenan begat Zidon, his firstborn, and Cheth. And so that you got the Yabusites, the Amorite, the Girgashite, the Hivite, the Archite, the Antisite, the Arvidite, Zemurite, and Kamathite. And afterwards, the speed of the Canaanites were, were scattered abroad. And the frontier of Canaan was from Zidon, coming from Gerar and Azza, coming unto Sodom and Gomorrah. And Adma and Zoabim unto Lasha. Now, what's interesting is those nations right here, you can find in Genesis 14, kings from those nations actually were in line with um, Chedah Lamar and other kings with him, like uh, Amraphel, King of Shinar, aka Nimrod. So I would suggest you want to get some context who these guys are, like uh, the. So, the king of Sodom and Gomorrah and Adma, Zoabim and all that. Go to Genesis 14. It's a pretty interesting story with Abraham there. Um, and so Adma, Zoabim, unto Lasha, these are the sons of Ham, according to their progenies, according to their languages and their lands and their peoples. And of Shem was born also. He is the father of all the sons of Eber and the brother of Yepheth the great. That's kind of interesting, the effect to great. That's kind of in like parentheses, so that might have been added by the translator there. The effect to great. <laughs> so uh, that that might just be a bias there. Uh, the sons of Shem, Elim, and Asher. Oh, boy. And Arpaxad, and Lud, and Aram. And that, that goes into another rabbit trail, what happened to Asher, because... Obviously, he's a different guy from Nimrod here because he's uh, being born from a different lineage, but somehow Nimrod takes that guy's identity when you get to the prophets. So something happened to Asher, and that's another study we could do at another time, what happened to the original Asher. And Arpaxad and Lud and Aram and the sons of Aram, Uz and Chut and Gether, and Mash and Arpaxad begot Shalak. Shalak begot Eber. And Eber were born two sons. The name of one was Peleg, because in his day the earth was divided. Now, people have theorized that this could be hinting to uh, the continental drift and stuff like with the continents, how the earth physically was divided. There was no more like all, like at one point, all the continents and countries were one landmass. And then um, supposedly, according to science, the, uh, there's something called the continental drift. So some people try to use that to support the continental drift. I don't know whether that's true. I'm just saying that's, that's a theory that's out there. Um, and the name of his brother, Yotan, and Yotan begat Amodad and Shalef and Katsar Mave and Yarak and Chadoram. And Uzzah and Dikla and Oba and Avimaal and Sheba and Ophir. So the place Ophir, a person actually had that name first before we have the place Ophir in scripture. Chavila and Yobab, all these are the sons of Yogtan, and their dwelling was from Mesha. Coming to Sephar, an eastern mountain, these are the sons of Shem, according to their progenies. According to their languages and their lands and their peoples, these are the progenies of the sons of Nuach by their generations and their peoples. By them were the peoples outspread in the earth after the deluge. And so, um, is there anything that um, Shushana you would like to add, or Sister Sadie, or uh, whoever's with us right now that would like to share with the viewers before we go? Not at this time. Okay. Um, that's for me, but anybody else? Yeah, Sadie, I see you're muted here. Do you have anything you want to add? Uh, 
So. And Sally was with us. I don't know where she went. Yeah, maybe her signal got messed up or something. I saw she got dropped out. Of, like I was like in mid paragraph when she got dropped out. Um, so what I want to say is geneolo genealogies are important because it helps us understand where other characters culture and connections with the lands that have these names like Ophir and and all these other names like um, Ash sure became Assyria. So it is important ge geography wise to understand, you know, who settled these lands later on in the prophets and later on in the old Testament and new Testament, you know, you'll have Magog, Meshach, Tuval, you know, so all those guys come against, you know, Yashrael and the Ezekiel war. So, I mean, it is, important to know about genealogies that's something i wanted to stress because i know sometimes that's taken out of context and people will say you know um paul says do not pay attention to any genealogies and people take that out of context so um it is important to know genealogies because um without genealogies help us understand you know yahusha's you know origins from basically he had to be in the tribe of Yehuda. And if something happened in his genealogy, Yahuwah would have not been able to use that lineage to send his son as the redeemer to take on the flesh of that specific tribe. So there, there is certain reasons that genealogies are put in scripture that I kind of wanted to stress to people. So. That's kind of like roots. There's a lot of to know where we're coming from and um, to know a tribe, even a tribe, because uh, I notice a lot of people want to use the word tribe. I'm of the tribe and then they'll say their name. So um, I think that as we learn about what happened to our brothers in the past period, it does give us a history so that we can follow along for today. Because like who would know what Syria is today. I mean, because mm -hmm. it's changed over and over the name, so this is really important, and I think it's like a good chart. I'm going to send you this chart. Let me take yeah. a picture of it. Right it's now. very it's very important, sis, to add, piggyback off of that. That's where we get Assyria, actually, the, the person Assyria became a name, actually, for Nimrod later on somehow. He took that guy's identity. Um, and actually, you'll see in the book of Isaiah, it says that, or no, not Isaiah, the book of Micah, chapter 5 or chapter 6, it talks about that prophetically, Yahushua is going to save us from the Assyrian, Asher. So um, I believe that Asher, somehow that identity, Nimrod stole at some point from that other guy. And so it's very important to know these genealogies. To It helps you with prophecy even. Um, you can kind of figure out what happened. So you got, you know, basically Nineveh got wicked because Nimrod found it. So, I mean, there's definitely certain things with genealogies and geography is very important to know that, uh, to know that Babylon became Iraq and so on and so forth. Even in secular geology is, um, geography, I mean, is important. So I think the admonition about, uh, geology, Endless, it was endless. Uh, yeah, yeah, endless genealogies. Like, uh, genealogy. I think he was mainly talking about people that are that get overwhelmed with, um, what tribe ethnically they would have been from, and you know, um, you know who who was the original ethnic Israelites. I think that's what Paul was referring to. Like endless, endless, endless genealogies. You're going back, like. Uh, 20, 30 generations trying to figure out, you know, whether you're a physical Israelite or not. I think in context, that's what he was referring to. I, I think that would make more sense than... Uh, or you what know. tribe you're... Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm not going to see right now. Um, this is where mm -hmm. I want to take you here. Um, this way. Right. Yeah, I'm trying to think of other places that we know where they are now. I mean, you got Iraq for Babylon. You got Assyria. I think became just Syria. 
the country Syria supposedly was a serious. So, I mean, there's a lot of, um, you know, hints of where other places came, you know, where they are now. Um, but the biggest thing to me was prophetically what genealogy shows and stuff like that to know, to know where it is, where people settled at and what places, what, what were the people behind the names of all these lands? It kind of gives you a better idea, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but, I used to study my ge genealogy, and um, it was kind of it kind of just got thrown at me what tribe I am um, mm -hmm. when I was just looking for. Uh, what you call the um, family crest. I was, that's what I was looking for on my father's side. And, and um, I found the red hand of Zara, which shows that we are from the line of Yehuda. But mm. it's not that it's not really important. It's just, it was shown to me by accident. That's all I wanted to bring out. Hmm. Let me see. Sadie, I think, was showing something about the, what is this, the, uh, oh, maps and stuff like that. Let me see if I can put this on share screen. Yeah, this, hopefully, that. hopefully you can zoom in a little bit because this is this kind of out of zoom in here. Like, I need to zoom into this. Uh, hopefully, no, it doesn't zoom in. That's that's really small. Um, uh, let me see here. That's gonna be hard to read. Um, let me, take, let me yeah. start my part. Yeah, that's the only problem with shared screen is if it's a small picture, it doesn't zoom in that much. Um, let me just see here. I'm gonna see if there's a way. Um. I'll take corner by corner. Let me see here. So, so here's the bloodline of Adam. So I'm going to do this. Let's see here. First picture. Oh, you got a multiple ones here. Let me see the first one. Oh, oh man, one. that's if only the writing was a little bigger. Okay, that, here we come. If you can see this, and see if you can put it together. Hang on. I mean that's great. Where where do you have that chart from? Where that can chart? yeah? Where do you get the Adam genealogy chart? Is that in a specific translation you have or? No, so this is. Remember, I told you when you guys came here to um, California, this is where I want to take you. And then let me see. Um, so that's a great chart. Um, Fortunately, the viewers are not even going to be able to read some of the people of the genealogies because it's so small print. Um, you know, sideways. Yeah, and it's sideways. Um, <sighs> Let me see. Look at that. I'm just seeing. Um, I can take it and break it up for you. Yeah. Let me see. So I'm going to cut that. These are sideways, so you can't get it. I'm going to keep it for me because I can get it out. All right, so that's the last picture you sent. Let's see here. Okay, that's a little little more zoomed in. Okay, so you got uh, you got the tabernacle. What is it? The general chart. Adam, Seth. I see Seth under there. It's a little bit glared to the side. I can okay, kind of kind of make it up. Um, I see some of them, like, I see Ham's lineage pretty well, Mitzrayim, Foot, Canaan, and all that, Aram, Cush. Another, another important thing is to understand, oh, I wanted to tell the audience right now, let's kind of back up from the genealogy. I wanted to explain uncovering his nakedness, because any Christians that are listening, I should have touched on this before when I was actually reading it, but the... Untouching his dad's nakedness is not what you're thinking or, or what you've been taught in the church. It's not uncovering his dad's blanket, okay? That's not what scripture defines as uncovering your dad's nakedness or your father's nakedness. Ham basically 
committed incest with his own mother. That's 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 what that's why he was cursed because I'm sorry, no dad's gonna curse his son, you know, have Yahuwah curse his son for lifting his covers and making fun of that he's drunk. I'm sorry, that's it doesn't make any logical sense. It's if you really use common sense and you look in Le- Leviticus tells you straight up what's uncovering your dad's nakedness in context. Talks about, you know, you don't you don't take you don't take your sister, you don't you don't take your dad's wife, you don't take your mother, you know, so on and so forth. So so that's uncovering your father's nakedness. Um, so I just wanted to make that clear and any Christians that might have been listening today also when we read Genesis chapter 7 um, please take to heart that it's pretty clear that um, there's clean and unclean before the law of Moses that's something I wanted to make clear um, as you can see um, basically Yahuwah told Nuach way back in Genesis way before Mount Sinai bring seven clean and too unclean, and obviously in context, he would be eating the seven clean, and uh, when he got off the ark, even in the Masoretic text in the Septuagint, it says that he was commanded to only sacrifice the clean animals to Yahuwah. So that's something I wanted to make mention of. You can find that, I believe, in Genesis chapter 7, verses 1 to 2, if I'm not mistaken. So that's something... You can uh, uh, piece it together, and uh, with pieces, uh, maybe you can uh, cut and paste. Yeah, I could. I could probably try to try to um, copy it. Like try to make a own chart myself to give the people, maybe, and try to make the make it a little bit bolder. But yeah, so this is a little bit better though, sis. I could actually show the audience. They can at least make it out somewhat. So this is my sister Sadie. She had a genealogy chart from the basically the patriarchs of the Tanakh that we were reading from today. You have Ham, you have Japheth to the right. Unfortunately, it's a little cut off here. Um, but you have Japheth, Ham, um, Nahor, Milcah, Abram, Sarai. So we haven't even gotten to some of these yet. You know the the we haven't gotten to Jacob yet with the twelve tribes, but you get the twelve. You got the sons that make up the twelve tribes down here. So, if anyone's interested, I can show you pictures of this genealogical chart. If anyone's interested, um, other than that, I just want to say thank you for joining us today, our audience, um, viewers and listeners, and any brothers and sisters in Yahuwah Almighty Yahushua Messiah that have joined us today, been listening. Hopefully, this message was. Um, uh, uh, Baruch for you and hopefully um, you got something out of it and um, happy Feast of Sukkot have a great Feast of Sukkot Shalom 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 Shalom. Shalom. alright